Hey guys, welcome to the Bourbon Aaron Podcast. I'm Austin. Let's get started. So it's here. I've been talking about it since almost last March, but it's here. The March bracket battle, bourbon earring bracket battle. This year isn't bottom shelf. This year I'm going to be taking the top three bourbons, top three ryes, top three scotches, and top three other whiskeys that uh, I drank on my weekend reviews and putting them head to head. Today is uh, the first round. It's going to be the first uh, the first quarter of the first round. So this week's going to be, I'm going to try the three other whiskeys and pick a winner. Then next week is going to be the three rise and pick a winner. Then I'm going to do the three scotches, pick a winner. And week four is going to be uh, three bourbons and I'm going to pick a winner. Then week five is going to be the winning bourbon against the winning rye to do the winning American whiskey. And then I'm going to do the winning scotch and the winning other whiskey for the uh, winner of world whiskey. Now, one of the other whiskeys is actually American from Texas, Balcona's True Blue, but it's a corn whiskey, so it counts as an other whiskey, not another country whiskey, but an other whiskey. But take that into account. Um, so that's how it's going to work. And then obviously we're going to have a champion between the best American whiskey and the best other whiskey, uh, other world whiskey, if you will, for the best of the bracket. Uh, how I'm going to release, this is going to be my Wednesday episodes. So every Wednesday is going to be this for the next month and a half. And I'm still going to do my regular Friday episodes separately from this. Um, I might combine just to shorten it a little bit. I might combine the world and the American whiskey round into one. Just, you know, why not? Because I'm going to try and three to two. It'll be all right. But that's how it's going to work. Uh, as for individual scoring, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, rate the nose of each whiskey out of five, rate the taste of each whiskey out of five. That includes the finish. That's taste and finish. And then rate the value out of five. And then combine those scores for each and the highest score uh, will move on. Now, if for some reason there's a tie, I'm going to uh, look at specifically the the finish um, because it's not it's not in pl- it's in the taste category, but it's not uh, its own category. So that's going to be the tiebreaker. Just so you all know ahead of time, I got some I got some flack last year from uh, some listeners that I didn't explain the scoring and the tie breaking well enough. And they were mad that monkey shoulder did not win it all. Um, it, it was all in good fun, but, uh, I want to make sure I don't have to do that again. Go through that again. All right. Without further ado, uh, we're going to hear an ad about the uh, glasses I'm drinking out of today for this competition. And then we're gonna get to the, the, uh, competition. Here we go. Hey guys, Austin here with bourbon Earring to talk about prestige decanters. Uh, Prestige is where I get my whiskey tasting glasses for all my podcasts. Um, I do all my reviews with these glasses. They're a beautiful tulip shape. Um, They also have a lot of fun rocks glasses and things like that, as well as beautiful decanters like their name suggests. Uh, Use the link in uh, the description below and use promo code BourbonEar and you can get 8% off your order at Prestige. It helps the show out. It helps you out and helps uh, them out. So check them out when you get a chance and thanks for listening. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, I'm here about to try the other whiskeys uh, and pick a winner here. So I'm going to give you the the seating, the top seating, um, but I'm going to be drinking these in order of lowest to highest proof just for my palate purposes. So first up, um, well, first I'm going to give you the rankings. In third place for this uh, for this sector, we have the Suntory Toki Japanese whiskey at 43% alcohol. Uh, in second place, we have Caribou Crossing, a single barrel uh, from Elixir Spirits, and it is at 40% alcohol, 80 proof. And in first place, we have Balcona's True Blue, 100 proof. Uh, it is a corn whiskey from Texas. Caribou Crossing, I don't want to say it. Caribou Crossing is from Canada. All right. So let's, we're going to start with Caribou Crossing because it is 80 proof and it's the lowest. 
So I'm not rating on bottle looks or cork pop, but that was a pretty good one, and this is a pretty bottle. Nice metal elk on the top. Caribou, I assume. Let's see here. All right. Got a nice little glass of that. So, first the color. Again, not a ranking, but I'm going to go ahead and go through a whole other review. It's a nice bourbon color, I would say. A nice dark amber. Makes pretty. It's pretty. I put it under a flashlight just to for a cool look, and it looks cool. All right, nose first. The first uh, scoring round right here. We got the nose. Mm. Sweet, sweet vanilla bomb. Someone told me, and now I can't not get that note. Mm. Got a little bit of sharpness to it. It doesn't smell. I don't have an age statement on it, but it. Doesn't it doesn't seem young. It's definitely a sweeter. I would say it's a mix between a bourbon and a, <laughs> excuse me, and a uh, a, a, a uh, Irish whiskey. Jameson is what I was trying to say. Kind of that cookery, cookie, cookie uh, smell to it. All right, out of five on the nose, I like it. I'm gonna give it a four. Give it a four on the nose. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Alrighty. Um, any more notes I'm getting out of it? Like I said, sugar cookie, caramel, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. Alright, let's move on to the taste. Mm. Like a sweet tea. Like a, a pre bought like a gold peak sweet tea, like the pre-bottled kind. Not the fresh tea taste. Sweet. Definitely get some vanilla in there. Almost vanilla extract like. Very watery. Like a watered down rye. Kind of maybe a watered down boo rye, bourbon rye mix. Um it's good. I really enjoy it. I'm gonna have to give it. I'm probably gonna give it a a three. I'm gonna give it a three on the uh, on the taste. I'm sticking with whole numbers for this part. This is not necessarily what I would give it overall. Again, this is how I'm feeling in the moment for each separate piece of the whiskey. I'm gonna give it a three on the taste. I like it, but it's not blowing me away here. Hmm. And lastly, the value. Now, I'm taking into account rarity as well as price and value. I got this bottle. I'm going to go off of uh, national averages. I got this bottle because it's a single barrel um, for maybe a little more than I should have paid for it. But uh, this bottle is kind of hard to find. And the national average is $51.49. That's kind of high. I don't know if I'd pay that much for it again. Uh, maybe if that if another single barrel just like blew me away. This one's great. I'm going to love the rest of this bottle. But the value is really not there. I'm going to have to give it a 2 on the value. Not the worst value I've seen. But a 2 nonetheless. And just for uh, this won't count into the, the overall score. Unless there's a tiebreaker. But. I'm going to give the finish oh, a three. It's good, but really short. All right. Well, I'm going to take a little break. Let uh, this kind of get off my tongue, drink some water, eat a cracker or two, and get back to you with the next whiskey. All right. So the next whiskey on the list, uh, it's actually number three in the uh, in the poll here, is Centauri Whiskey Toki. It is 43%, so 86 proof. Um it was not necessarily my favorite. It's got one of the lower ratings, but it's only one of the, it's only, I only did three other whiskeys actually in this short amount of time. So it's on the list. Plus, I didn't hate it. This is no cork pop because it is screw top, uh, sadly. But it's a cool bottle. It's square, it's rectangular ish. It's a cool little bottle. I'll keep it around. 
Lucky for it, cork pop is not a category I'm judging on. All right, it's really light in color. A little bit darker than an Ardbeg 10. It's like a hay yellow, but very, very light. All right, on the nose, right at me is like a all barley. Definitely mostly malted barley. Very, very light, though. It's not... I would put it closer to an Irish than a Scotch on the nose. It's pleasant. It's very nice. A little farmy. But not very layered. Very sweet smelling. That's not my... A uh, little bit of butterscotch. Sweet, sweet butterscotch. Maybe like a, a Tootsie Roll pop? Not the fruitiness, but like the the candy scent, the sugar scent. I'm gonna have to give this nose. There's nothing bad, nothing wrong with it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at a three because it's pleasant. Nothing wrong with it, but it's not. There's nothing special about it that would warrant a four. Definitely not a five. All right. So for the taste, mm. just like the nose, all butterscotch, all pretty one noted. Not sharp. It's it drinks smoother than the uh, caribou the uh, caribou crossing, believe it or not. But I can't compare it in flavor at all. It's very light, like a watered down Scotch, a watered down Irish, even maybe. Very light, very friendly. I would I would have guessed Irish if I had this blind. Nothing offensive. Nothing offensive at all. Not hard to drink. It'd be nice, uh, you know, on a hot day. But there's no smoke there. There's no other layers that I get in, you know, scotches, even cheaper scotches, that make me want to stay with it, you know? It's not interesting. It's just bleh. I'm going to have to give it a, uh, I'm going to have to give it a two, I think, on the taste. Nothing offensive that would warrant a one, but just, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do with it. It's not... Not my favorite. Finally, value. So, it's easy to find. It's very, very, very prevalent right now. Although, Japanese whiskey as a whole is going, uh, it's getting harder to find. It, it's at $35, $35, $39, $35.39 on the national average. That's about probably what I paid for it. It's kind of expensive for what it is. I wouldn't pay that much for it at all i'm gonna have to leave it again at a two on the value because it's not over it's not the most expensive it's probably one of the cheaper actually japanese whiskeys but mm, it's not for me so i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give this straight twos mm. i'm sorry three two two the nose was a three so that gives us a seven out of 15 for this one uh remember caribou crossing got a nine out of 15 so it's it's lower on there. I don't think it's going to move forward, but it was good. It, I, I'm going to finish this bottle with doing something, maybe cooking with it or something like that. But all right, let me take another little break and we'll get back to our last whiskey. All right, and we're back for our final whiskey of the day, for our final other whiskey, Balcona's True Blue Corn Whiskey 100 Proof. This bottle has been a favorite. It's almost empty, actually mine and it is the number one seed at, again 100 proof 50 percent alcohol uh let's see Ooh, i'm a sucker for a good cork pop let's see i'm not pouring too much of these because one i don't want to get drunk <laughs> while recording videos but two i just got a couple new bottles uh i got some uh, barrel selects from the Baton Rouge Bourbon Society and a Four Roses pick and a uh, Buffalo Trace pick that I'm excited to try. I want to try it right after this. All right, back to the whiskey. Excuse me. All right, it's the darkest of the three for sure. Um, it, ma it makes sense being the highest proof by far. Let's get to the notes. All right, that nose, definitely a lot more alcohol on it. But it's a rich caramel, like a um, caramelized sugar, rich, a little perfumey, really oaky, I think. Sweet, sweet. 
brown sugar caramel, a little bit of cherry, like a, like a cherry sauce. Mm, real deep in the nose, real deep, dark flavors. All right, let's get to the taste. All right, I'm going to give a rating. Rating on the nose, wow. Um, that's one of my favorite noses on a whiskey. I've said it before, but it definitely is. I'm gonna give this one a I'm gonna give it a five on the nose. I've always loved this nose. Okie okie. Alright, let's move on to the taste here. The taste is a lot more oaky astringent. It's almost dare I say, Mr. I love oak. Dare I say, it's a little over-oaked on the taste. Okay, I think I'm drinking wood, almost. It's a different sensation. I guess the, I love the nose so much that the taste, it's its good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. This is just, it's really astringent to me right now. Like, oak, like barrel bitter, burnt char. Not in a good way. The finish is long, but not good. What What's happening to me? I, people know I love this whiskey. I don't... Ugh. It's not this bottle I've had. This is the only bottle I've had. I don't know. Maybe it's comparing it to the other two that are a lot lighter and, you know, more... For lack of a better term, more airy. Mm -mm. No. Let me, let me go back to the nose now that I have this taste in my mouth. No, the nose is still amazing. I'm going to have to give it a two on the taste. I'm going to have to give it a two. I'm at five, two. Mm, I don't know. Finally, the value. On average, it's 52.58, but it's hard to find. You can only get it, from what I know, uh, you can't get it in Louisiana, at least. The only place I can get it is Texas. It might be available other places, but I'm, for value, I'm going to have to stick with, I'm going to have to give it a one on the value. And that, again, this is because you can't find it. It's priced, it's a little expensive at $52. I, now that I've had this experience with it, again, it could just be the day. I don't know. It's kind of unfair to do it on just one day, but I can't. I can't give it more than a, a. I can't give it more than a one on the value. I really can't. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I'm sorry for all you Balconis fans out there. Um, I usually am too. I'm usually a fanboy, but I don't know why. I'm not really enjoying this taste. I guess I just love the nose so much. I ignored the taste. I don't know. Well, that puts us at a total score for Balconis eight. So, in third place for other whiskey, we have Suntory Toki. But it's only in, it's only in third by one point. In second place, we have the number one seed Balconis True Blue. I really expected that one to win. I uh, I was worried I was going to have three Americans versus one Scotch in the second round, but no. Uh, the winner is the Canadian Car uh, Caribou Crossing single barrel. It just eked it out. Now, obviously, True Blue won on the nose. I, that's still the most fantastic nose I've ever had in a whiskey. I... Mm, for right now, at least I can say that. Uh, but the taste and the value just killed it. It tied in taste with uh, Centauri Toki. And Toki had a better value score. So that's what put it... Uh, that's what put True Blue way behind, even starting with the five on the nose. Yeah. So congratulations to Caribou Crossing. Uh, that a pick from Elixir Spirits in, I believe, Nashville or in that a local area. Um, it's moving on to the second round. It is the best other whiskey. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. 
uh, check out this outro. We are uh, gonna be back next week with the uh, with the rise. I think I'm gonna do rise next. Maybe I'll do scotch. I don't know. But uh, I'm saving bourbon for last. The rise next week. See the best rye. Um, then we're going to scotch and then we'll f- finish up with bourbon and then see the best of America and the best of the world. Just like the Little League World Series, right? All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks for listening, guys. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure you subscribe on whichever player you're using. Leave a comment and leave a five-star review if you can. Once you've done that, go follow me on Instagram at Bourboneering or on Twitter at nbourbon or go like our Facebook page, uh, Bourboneering. All this, as well as my Prestige Decanter affiliate link and a link to sign up for a weekly newsletter are all below. Thanks for listening, everybody. Cheers.